Hi, uh, good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Hosni Ghadira from Mazdar Institute. First, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to take part of this interesting event. And special thanks to Dr. Amr, my uh, colleague and uh, my former colleague, but my, now my friend. He, uh, he was with us in Mazdar for four years. Um, <clears throat> so I put together a presentation to share the experience we have at Mazdar and Mazdar Institute regarding the implementation of renewable energy with more special focus on our environment, uh, our climate. It's true we have the sunny weather, but also we have a dusty and, and turbid climate that is affecting performance in terms of solar irradiance and also in terms of um, soiling, accumulation of dust uh, over the panels. And especially for Oman, because Oman is a very special country in terms of uh, microclimate. So you can see different, complete different climate from the north to the south. At the same time, you can have even 20 degree difference between two cities. And it's not the same the case for the UAE when you have the same homogeneous and, and stable uh, mm -hmm. environments. So first, um, our motivation started when, um, for this research work and for this implementation of those systems are uh, when the UAE set up a target 7% by 2020 of renewable that was part of uh, the bid to bring IRENA to Abu Dhabi and was, it was required at that time for, uh, for the country to set up clear target for renewables. And that time, what they did, they hired European um, consultancy to have first assessments of solar potential in the country. And then, um, so they, they came, they did some assessments, they produced some maps, and then when we start our field campaign, we find out that those maps overestimate solar resources, but in some cases by 15 to 20%. And this is huge uh, in terms of profitability, uh, the profit of any, any project, and that was also affected decision of to go for CSP at the first utility scale project, Shams One, is 100 megawatt project, that was operational now for more than uh, more than five years, um, and the reason why this overestimation, uh, the main main cause of this uh, overestimation, we find out because they underestimate the dust components. We have the dust affecting too much. So if we calcu we calculate statistics for the last 15 years, we find out we have more attenuation of solar irradiance to the dust than the cloud, and this is the unique. Uh, location in the world that has the specific condition. So it requires additional consideration in terms of select the best location for your utility scale plant and also in terms of technology that can absorb and accommodate such harsh environments. So for us, we start those two pilot, two, two, two real case studies. So we have the 10 megawatt PV project in Mazdar that now is operational for more than eight years. Um, and then we have this CSP project that we have access to the data to understand how the performance of those two plants uh, is affected by, um, by weather condition, affected by uh, climate condition, affected by the location, by the dust surrounding the, the plants, and so on. And also we have, um, uh, we start uh, intensive field campaign to measure high quality solar irradiance for uh, seven to eight location in the UAE. And then now with new project we started recently with uh, Saudi Arabia, we extending our, our coverage to more than 80 station uh, that are managed by KA Care uh, in Saudi. Uh, so those stations are measuring like real time solar irradiance that we use them to understand how the climate, how the weather condition, how the dust concentration, the atmosphere affecting uh, irradiance reaching the ground and also affecting performance of PV and, uh, and uh, CSP uh, plants. So we have this combination of different uh, source uh, data, <coughs> source of data. So we have, this is uh, illustration of Mazdar uh, City and Mazdar Institute building. So we have about three megawatt PV um, uh, rooftop uh, over the, the institute. This is, we have also the 10 megawatt plant. Uh, uh, we have different station distributed uh, over the country and also we have the satellite data that are used to fill the gaps of missing data and also to go back to historical data to understand some trend, to understand how the weather uh, condition and climate condition affecting performance and affecting solar irradiance. So we combine those different, uh, different uh, source of data. We have our own satellite receiving station. We are getting data uh, in real time from different satellite mission to see the weather, con uh, to see also the cloud 
coverage, the cloud uh, transparency level, uh, the, the dust concentration, and, and merge and, and mix all those factors to understand how those uh, climate and environmental conditions affect uh, performance and also affect uh, affect um, efficiency of PV plants, especially for the intermittence of the PV. It's a big issue for the grid operator, and I think this should be taken into consideration uh, in any uh, planning, especially when we are talking about large-scale uh, dispatching from PV plants. So this is one of our first mandate for, by the UAE government is to, to uh, produce uh, UAE Solar Atlas, uh, the first uh, the one, the maps at the right are the DNI, uh, the monthly DNI, uh, and the one at the left are the glo uh, GHI. Uh, and, and you see here, it's important, even the UAE has like a uh, homogeneous landscape and weather, so still we see some variabilities due to different factor. And we expect, uh, I think there are a couple of versions of uh, Solar Atlas uh, of uh, Oman, and we see more variability in space and time in Oman, because the weather variability is much higher in terms of landscape. We have different microclimate in, in the Sultanate of Oman that has, uh, they have taken into consideration. And this one will start even combining wind and solar because there are some area with low solar potential by high wind potential uh, and, and so on. And, and, and see also the, <clears throat> the decision that was made at the time to, 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 to opt for the, uh, for the CSP technology. And you know that CSP technology depends on the DNI for performance. Uh, and we have the lowest DNI in the summer when we have high demand uh, electricity. So, so, so for, for us, that time, those decisions, it was mainly uh, made because the initial maps that were used to make this decision, they don't have a dust component. And the drop of DNI that we have it, uh, in, uh, in the UAE is due to the dust. So it's very critical uh, information that affected uh, even the, the investment level because uh, you know the CSP is expensive technology. Uh, when uh, the UAE built the CHEMS one, 100 megawatt, at that time, the kilowatt hour cost 32 cent, I'm talking US dollars. But now, I think most of you are aware, but Dubai bid recently, they reached 9.5 cents, so almost like 30% lower. No, 70% lower in terms of price. Uh, when we, uh, we start with our 10 megawatt in Mazdar, that time, the, the kilowatt hour cost about 18 cents. At now, you know, also is about 2.5 cents. So it's a huge difference in terms of price and also in terms of investment, in terms of cost. And now the kilowatt hour um, uh, from PV cost 25% compared to, uh, to, to CSP. So it's four times, CSP is still four times more expensive, but you know, CSP advantage is the storage, as you had more stable on the grid. Uh, so the 9.5 cent that Diwa in Dubai get it for the, the large uh, CSP plant, it's for 12 hour storage. So you can have continuous supply power through from solar, uh, concentrated solar power. This is also the same project we started. So what we did uh, at our research center, so we have, we built this expertise in mapping and assessing solar resources in desert environments. So, when the Saudi, uh, uh, when Saudi Arabia so start looking for their uh, long-term plan for solar, and you know for Saudi, it's also a critical issue. Uh, to go back to the question and, and the answer of uh, Dr. Amr regarding uh, if you have oil, why you have to invest in expensive solar. In Saudi now, they are burning about 3 million barrels per day for electricity out of the 12 or 11 million barrels per day production. And they're expecting by 2030, they, will be, they need to burn all their oil production just to produce electricity. So for them, to start looking for alternative source of energy is, is critical and, and critical issue. So for them, uh, for, for the kingdom, they set clear target now of nine, gig, nine gigawatt by 2030 or 2032. And then as to start this uh, uh, national plan, uh, the first step is to have an accurate assessment of solar potential in the country. And in the kingdom here, what we did with our... Uh, uh, Saudi partner is to produce a detailed uh, atlas of the kingdom showing, uh, and the kingdom is a large country, it's, it's a 28 times the size of the UAE. It's, it's, and, uh, it has also, it's, it's sim they have similar uh, variability in terms of climate. In the north is completely different microclimate compared to the south in terms of DNI, in terms of GHI, in terms of what technology is more uh, convenient. They have also some areas, some spots with high wind potential. So they're, 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 they have different options in terms of uh, their strategy uh, for renewable energy implementations compared to what we have in the UAE. 
So those are some of the maps we produce. Uh, we produce them also in real time because we developed some model that be able to produce those maps each 15 minutes. Also, we are running our forecasting model to be able to forecast DNI and GHI for the next 48 hours and convert also using uh, uh, like real configuration of existing plants, we can be able, we'll be able to forecast uh, the amount of kilowatt hour that can produce, be produced tomorrow. And this is also, it's very uh, critical, important information for grid operator to make sure the, 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 the dispatched power that can be generated from existing uh, renewable energy plants so they can take alternative uh, solution. And, and here, uh, for our region, is very important uh, because forecasting of uh, DNI and GHI and forecasting of solar plant uh, 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 production, uh, it's existing everywhere, but they don't have, it's mainly based on cloud forecasting because this is the main attenuating factor. So they have two main parameters they use in their forecasting is uh, sun geometry, so they can calculate the amount of irradiance reaching the ground, and also the weather condition and many the cloud. And for them, dust is constant attenuating factor like the water vapor. But for us, we have, as I mentioned earlier, we have more attenuation to the dust. So it doesn't make sense to implement the solar forecasting model that is based on clouds. So the dust is very critical uh, component that has to be taken uh, into consideration. And those are the three attenuating and absorbing factors that we have that we have to consider in any modeling of solar resources. And in terms of uh, assessing uh, existing and historical data, also in terms of forecasting uh, of, of solar resources. So, so the model that we developed are uh, different two models, the cloud-free model and the, and, and the cloudy model that is more complex. When you have cloud, especially when you have scattered cloud, will be... Um, the, the, the mechanism of attenuation are very complex that has to be uh, taken into consideration, especially when we start f in the forecasting. When we, we start forecasting for the next 24 hours, the accuracy to be sure that tomorrow at noon you have cloudy conditions, so it will be affecting the productivity at noon. So for decision makers, they have to readjust their operation and they have to find other alternatives. So for us, the accuracy is very important. So we kept like um, improving and adapting those weather forecasting model. And, and also uh, empowering and, and giving more weight to the dust components and to improve the accuracy of our, uh, uh, our forecast. So those kind of, uh, some example of forecasted uh, data over the Arabian Peninsula, uh, it's, it's include the cloud uh, thickness and how the cloud thickness affect the attenuation of solar irradiance and how this can be later on linked to the attenuation and the, f and, and the reduction of performance of any uh, solar PV plants. <clears throat> Go quickly is over some um, DNI uh, forecasting. This is uh, just some numbers to show how how uh, dust uh, accumulation over panel. Now I'm not uh, I'm talking about soiling because this is also a big issue. Uh, when we uh, because you know now one of the largest project that is uh, undergoing in, in Dubai is 800 megawatt PV that would be uh, put online in 2018. And when we talk about 800 megawatt PVs, is about nine by 10 kilometers. It's a huge area. Uh, cleaning the panel requires army of labor to go and clean them. And also, uh, when we start talking about the carbon footprint, in terms of the carbon footprint, all those labor are going through um, to, to clean the panels. Because when you have the accumulation, this table show the percentage, how the accumulation in terms of cent uh, gram per centimeter square of dust over your panel affecting your performance. And our estimation, if we don't, um, if we don't clean it, if we keep it like all the panel uh, and clean it for, uh, for three months, we'll be losing about 80% uh, efficiency on our panel. So cleaning is very important. And to do that, we have to have a better assessment of the soiling, accumulation of, of dust over the panels. And this is what we are doing. So we, uh, we also we are integrating the deposition of dust in our model to estimate the amount of dust that will be uh, deposited in the next 48 hours. And this information is very critical because if you are planning to clean your panels today and you know that tomorrow you have a dust storm that will settle in your panel and the cleaning is very expensive exercise, we are talking about 10 by 10 kilometer of PV panel that require uh, a lot of effort to clean them. So it's very important also to have this information decision making process. And also, <clears throat> this is simulation of historical data and show we have some months with uh, more soiling. If you see here for March, we have the high soiling uh, because we have more frequent uh, dust storm. And, and sometimes you have dust storm with no deposition. So deposition is also uh, 
it's, it's a factor that has to be calculated uh, from the frequency and the intensity of dust storm. And, and this is also what helps decision makers in terms of uh, probability, in terms of probabilistic approach, in terms of uh, estimation of, um, uh, of, the, uh, of the expected production, of the expected production for the specific month. And the soiling is, is also important when we start talking about the large scale plants. Now in, in, uh, in Swaihan in Abu Dhabi, we'll be starting the 1.1 gigawatt PV plant. So it's, it's we're talking now, it's about 15 by 10 kilometer of PV plant. So it's very important also to take this into consideration. <coughs> so, uh, so this is just a summary of some previous studies. Um, and then, and, and all of you are aware about the cost now of the PV um, based on the recent uh, tender, the recent bid uh, in the UAE and also in Saudi Arabia, it's closed numbers is 2.5 US cent per kilowatt hour. And we expect it to be, um, to, 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 to continue reducing. But now other, other things to the battery technology also that are now, uh, there are different combination of large-scale PV plant with the battery technology, so it will be sort of solving out the problem of, um, of intermittence. If you have this buffer of batteries, so you can maintain a steady output of your power. And now the room for the, the price uh, reduction and the cost reduction now is in the battery technology, not in the PV panels, because we are reaching the limit in terms of, uh, in terms of cost. So this is also is very important about um, the careful selection of what technology you're using, the careful selection uh, about the location of your plant, and also in terms of planning, because for, for a private company that are bidding for large-scale PV plant, there are different, sometimes project is one or two cent difference in your offer, so to can, can, can you can win or lose uh, your project. Uh, those are the projects I'm talking about. So there are the, the Dubai project. This is for data for uh, 2000 uh, existing data. We have the 10 megawatt, 11 megawatt in Mazdar. Uh, we have the <coughs> 13 megawatt in Dubai. Uh, now the existing now uh, solar capacity is 24. This is just PV. I'm not talking about the 100 megawatt CSP. This is the plan for, uh, for the, the next three years. So we have... Uh, more than one uh, 2.22 gigawatt power, just counting the one uh, 1.1 gigawatt for Swaihan, Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi, and 800 uh, megawatt in Dubai. And it's not counting the CSP now, the 100 in Abu Dhabi and the 250 in the pipeline in um, in Dubai. And also, this uh, this graph show you the the evolution of the PV, uh, the cost of PV, and then the breakdown. Why now we are reaching here? It mentioned like 1.42, and this is the what uh, the cost. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, Yes, this is from 2009, 2016, uh, in terms of break, I don't know if you can read it, but there are different components. So here I have some, uh, for the last year, uh, <coughs> for 2016, so now the cost is 1.42 uh, uh, per watt. Uh, this is the, the, the cost. Uh, and then if you see the breakdown of this cost, uh, here it's, there it's mentioned like the panel 072, but now in the market, existing market, you can easily monocrystalline or polycrystalline, you can buy it at 30 cent per watt capacity, so a reduction of, of almost 50 percent. And here the prices is, is a bit high because uh, the land is included. It's why you say for Dubai, um, why you are getting 2.5 cent, because the land is provided free uh, by the governments. Let me go quickly about the model and the, the potential economic assessment, how we can use different factors to assess the cost, how much will cost you to, to build up large-scale plants, and what factors are, are, are um, affecting this cost. Uh, so this is first, we have the first component that is required for any cost assessment is the resource potential. Uh, and it's more like the methodology we use is to have a better assessment of irradiance for different locations. So if you be assessing the cost for any specific location, you have to have a clear picture about solar irradiance for that specific location. And this is, uh, we use a combination, combination of satellite data, we use a combination of ground station uh, to, to fill the gaps, and then we produce those final maps showing uh, the solar irradiance at very high spatial and temporal resolutions. So we go through the, the, the quality check uh, and also to, to see the area map in terms of the size. And then we start looking later on about the variability in time and space. And we use the TMY, typical meteorological year, to use as a reference for our estimation. So as here, the, uh, you go th through the, the details about the different inputs we use to have a better assessment of solar irradiance. 
because when you select a location here and you are planning to have a large scale utility plant, you cannot wait for five years to have enough data to make your decision. So the only way to do it is to use the model data uh, to, be, to make sure that it's more accurate, as accurate as possible. And those are uh, some of the maps we produce. Uh, this is about the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the GSI, this one. So the, the GHI, as I mentioned, it's, it's, it's homogeneous. We have, as expected, we have high potential in the south. Uh, the coastal area and the mountains area, is, it's less because it's more cloudy in average. So, and also the water vapor and the humidity is higher. So it's affecting and lowering the performance. But the, the difference is, is, is slightly low difference between, maybe the color scale is misleading, but there's low difference, low difference. Uh, this is different also, the data can be presented in different, uh, like aligned, like tiled angle or like sample angle. And this is about the technical potential, about uh, what technology, because for us, there are, you know, there are different technologies in the market, they have different prices, but what technology is more suitable first to the, to the, to the range of, of, of solar irradiance and also to the climate condition in terms of, because we have some materials that are uh, more uh, repelling than other materials. So, uh, uh, we have like uh, some uh, like uh, mono polycrystalline will be reacting differently for soiling. So this is like different factor that has to be taken into consideration. Uh, I will go quickly through the, the 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 approach and the model description that we use to estimate technical potential. But it has uh, the key is like the specification of the material and technology solar technology used and the configuration of the system uh, in terms of arrays, in terms of inventors, and so on. And also the solar potential is a key factor that is used for it. I think the presentation will be available. If you, if you need more details about some section, you can find like detailed description of the methodology used uh, in this approach. And this is uh, the plant capacity factor is one, one, one of the indicator we use for, for, for decision. And this is for monocrystalline uh, silicon. And, and, and it give you the efficiency in terms of, and you know the solar, it will never exceed 22, 24%. So, and this is, it's important. So when we talk about CSP, it can reach 45, 50% efficiency. But the PV, this is the limit because it's, it's the weather and you cannot operate at night and you cannot operate under cloudy and, and dusty uh, environment. But this is show you the, 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 the plant capacity factor for any location in the UAE and you know also in the south because we have the highest irradiance compared to the, 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 to the coastline, we have high potential. And this is for different technology and this is very important to see how technology will behave differently under different weather conditions. And this is for one tilt, one two tilt, if you have like fixed mount or like uh, tilted mount. And also uh, here we are adding the, the grid components and the transmission losses in terms of connection to the grid. It is one factor that we use to make, uh, to make our decision because investing sometime losing 1% efficiency is better than investing in another grid uh, network to connect your plants to the, to the main grid. Uh, transmission losses for alt customer or the closest customer. There are different, like use a different methodology and different, um, there are standard presentation of this result that are used by the community. So to have you can present in different uh, formats. So this is also the plant performance ratio uh, for different technology. And you can see also the difference. And this is also the plant uh, for, um, yeah, monocrystalline, two tilt. Just we go quickly, just to, to capture uh, the special variability of different technology. This is the cell temperature is almost the same because it's linked to the weather and to air temperature, except in the Fujairah side, in the mountain side, we have lower temperature compared to the rest of the UAE. So we can see some difference, but the temperature is almost the same. But the same map for Oman will be completely different because as I mentioned, the temperature, the air temperature, the surface temperature is completely different, different location. Uh, so you can see some special variability and it is critical also uh, information that has, should be taken into consideration when you have select location for large-scale uh, PV plants. And also cell temperature depends on technology because there are, there are some technologies that can operate better under uh, hot temperature compared to other uh, solar technologies. We go quickly over, over the uh, economic potential. This is using like configuration itself of the plant. So in terms of operational cost, the installation cost, the, I think I still have one minute. Uh, and, and the result will be the LCOE, the leveled cost finish. Okay, so let me go quickly to the final. 
as I said, this is, you can find the detailed presentation if you want to see, uh, you want to follow some of the details. So this is like for uh, polycrystalline uh, LCUE, and this is one of the final map that here some area we can reach less than 3.5 percent, uh, 3.5 cent per kilowatt hour. And this is the reason why, because the land is included, but why you, the question why Dubai is getting 2.5 cent compared to 3.5, because Dubai providing the land for free. Okay, so thank you for your time. Uh, I'll be here for any question. Thank you, Rector Hasli. Thank you very much for the uh, nice presentation. Uh, we can take a question from the audience, and then we'll move probably to online question as well. Mandu Salman. Assalamu <coughs> alaikum. Uh, my name is Salman Hatali from Masqat Electricity Company. Thank you, Dr. Hosni, uh, for the interesting presentation. My question here about the, you come across one of the important uh, challenges, which is uh, cleaning the, the boards or the solar uh, BV panels. Uh, I'm wondering if you have, if you ch um, uh, thought about the self-cleaning for those panels, where some of the energy produced by those uh, panels is used for self-cleaning. I understand losing 80% of the efficiency for th if not cleaned for three months is a huge, uh, huge uh, uh, loss. But uh, for sh long term, um, I'm not sure whether this can be one of the solutions or it can be considered as a self-cleaning uh, methodology. Yeah, the self-cleaning, there are two options. So there are some uh, new development about coating. So you have like a, a coat that you can fix over the panel. It's not self-cleaning, but it's repellent. So, it, because sometimes we have the big issue of um, dusty and humid. So the, the dust becomes sticky, and then you have to brush it. And when you brush, you have to will be damaging the panel itself. So it's a very challenging issue. And, and then there are many solutions. I mean, there are some provider like vendors, even robots, and and like with water jets, and they can. But it's very expensive still. And you know the market is very competitive now in terms of, as I mentioned, like sometime, uh, like. Uh, 10% of one cent US dollars can make difference between getting a project or not. So, and, and, and the issue and the region here, you know, the labor is, we, ha we can have access to cheap labor. So this is, is accounted in terms of in the operation of the large scale PV plants, but still has associated costs, especially when you start looking at from the carbon footprint. Because if you have like 500 labor that you send them to the field to clean all the panel for one day, it has some carbon CO2 and carbon footprint associated to it. So in terms of presenting as clean energy and, and you have to count all those factors to have your, uh, to, to account for your carbon footprint for your operation. But definitely there are many solutions, but there is also cost associated with. And we're reaching now the low, because now the, the, by the Chinese pa and pan panel from China now about 30 cent per watt, so the cheapest price compared to 70 cent per watt like three years ago. And now I think there is no room for more, uh, for a cheaper price. So it's why when you start adding more self-cleaning uh, techniques, it will be affecting the price. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the And then we'll move to a question from uh, Online. Thank you, Doctor, for this presentation. Just uh, one of the things that you have said, I don't know, maybe it needs some explanation, which is you say that DNI is the more, most important for the generation, but it's, it's the lowest while we are at the hottest uh, time during the year. What's the relation between this? Is it because of the dust or what? No, no, no. Uh, I said uh, when you see the monthly maps, we have the lowest DNI in the summer month. So July, June, August, we have the lowest uh, DNI. And then during those months, we have the highest demand because you know, the cooling, for the cooling demands, we have the highest demands. This is just to say, maybe the CSP is not the best technology because the CSP is relying on DNI for efficiency. When you have low DNI, we cannot operate your CSP plant, but you can keep operating your PV plants, by the way. Okay. Because when you have PV, so it can, you can operate under dusty environment because the diffuse component can be used to capture and to be converted to electricity. So it's why this is uh, this is the point of uh, regarding the DNI in the summer. There's a question online also coming. It says uh, about dust and high temperature negative effect on BP solar. Uh, it can be limited by building solar BP power plant on Gebel Lakhdar or Gebel Shams. The same, yeah. Well, but you'll be losing also on on GHI. 
because in Jabal Lakhdar we have less GHI compared to other areas. So you have to find the balance because you can find area with less, because we, like it or not, we have the highest solar uh, irradiance in dusty uh, landscapes. So, but you have to find the balance between, between the two. One question from uh, uh, alaikum everyone. Um, I know your presentation focused mo mostly on solar energy, but I was wondering if Mustar has other researches in other potential renewable energies, and which of those have more potential than others. I think most of uh, when we talk about Mustar, uh, we have two. We have Mustar Institute, the R and D arm of Mustar Corporate. But also we have Mosler uh, Corporate investing in wind also. We know that uh, London Array is 600 megawatt winds and also in, just I heard that Mosler is investing in the, in the DAFRA project here in the, for the wind farm. Uh, but in terms of research, we are focusing mainly in solar, in terms of solar uh, material science, and so, uh, like uh, coming up with innovative material for that can accommodate and can be more tailored to the climate here in terms of uh, solar performance. Uh, regarding all the renewables, so we have a team working on waste to energy, we have the biofuel team. Uh, what else, Dr. Amr? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, geothermal, uh, we started like five years or six years ago, but there is no huge potential in the region, but uh, maybe Oman, they have some, they have high potential of geothermal compared to, to Mazdar, because Mazdar, we, uh, we, we, we did, did like one, um, I think 1.6 kilometer deep well for, and we, and the highest temperature we reach about 95 degrees is not enough for any commercial uh, geothermal uh, electricity production. Okay, since we have very lim uh, limited time, I think there is a, uh, I think that's, do you have more question online? Okay, so recently announced, uh, does Mustar have uh, extensive research done uh, for Oman or uh, for both wind and solar. Maybe I can answer this question. <laughs> uh, while I was in Mazdar, we had uh, one project related to uh, uh, the far wind project. So we look, we, we've been looking at uh, uh, an option to uh, 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 control the variability of wind, the 50 megawatt project there. And uh, we managed to gather information from the meteorology department, uh, from Mazdar itself as well. And we end up with a scenario where uh, wind and solar system can complement each other. So we, have, uh, we, we found out that wind is very active at night and the solar system is active during the daytime. That gives a, a very nice balance of, of uh, energy uh, where we can reach a fully dispatchable renewable power plant. So that's one of the things that we did in Mazdar also. All right, so I think we'll, we'll, I'm sorry, we'll not be able to take more questions because we need to move to the next speaker. Uh, but Dr. Hasni will be available and uh, during the break, uh, during the day, and for the next three days as well. Okay? Okay, so, thank you. Uh, Engineer Omar would like to... رخاء يدوم